Hello and welcome to Tune Into Wellness Today. My name is Lisa Marie and as you can see I am not in the studio today. I am actually at the Saratoga War Horse Foundation in lovely Schuylerville, New York. Today we will be discussing post-traumatic stress disorder and an innovative new program that helps our veterans to recover from post-traumatic stress disorder. Before I introduce you to the lovely gentleman who founded this innovative program, I want to give you a high-level overview, again, of things, symptoms to look for uh, in yourself or in a loved one that might trigger that this person has post-traumatic stress disorder. So if you notice yourself or a loved one feeling hopeless or angry, having angry outbursts, having fear, flashbacks, reoccurring dreams, isolating themselves or having suicidal ideation, please do consider reaching out to a professional to see if you're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. In 2015, we had over 6,500 veterans commit suicide. We want to stop that from occurring. Now, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Bob Nevins. Bob was a medevac pilot in the Vietnam War. He was wounded in action in 1971, and although being wounded in action, he went on to serve the country in the National Guard for many years. Bob was also a captain, an airline captain, for 24 years until 2001. And then he founded Saratog Saratoga Warhorse Foundation. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Thank you for having us here at Saratoga Warhorse Foundation. So my understanding is Saratoga Warhorse Foundation is a nonprofit organization. Correct. Is that correct? And its main focus is to help veterans heal. That's it. And that is our only focus. It's strictly a confidential program geared towards uh, veterans from all wars, uh, from the current conflicts to uh, we've even had Korean War veterans attend the program. And uh, they were all dealing with the same issues, uh, post-traumatic stress across all borders. Now, You've had 500 graduates from the program? 500 have successfully completed the program so far. That is wonderful. So let's hear about the program. So this program is in essence where you have veterans that come in and form a relationship with thoroughbred racehorses, correct? Retired thoroughbred racehorses? Uh, right. The framework for that is it's actually a three-day program. Day one is a travel program where they fly in, we pick them up at the airport, take them to the hotel. This is all paid for by the War Horse Foundation. And uh, they'll come in, we'll meet them, we'll brief them on what is going to happen at the barn, at the farm the next day. The next day we do take them to the farm. We then give them a classroom portion of instruction and the science behind what we're doing which is so crucial. This is not a recreational program in any way. It's not about loving horses. This is about they're coming to us because they've tried every modality out there, all the medications, all the therapy, and they're still dealing with what we consider the number one issue, the nightmares, and the inability to sleep. Not just the lack of sleep, but the inability. So, when we put them through this procedure with the horse, the idea is we're taking man, the natural predator, matching him with the horse, the natural flight animal. So that's a completely different language that we speak. We were able to teach them that language, causing the horse to recognize the language, and then actually intentionally trying to bond with what was a predator, but for the veteran who is emotionally flatlined, disconnected, that experience, and we call it experience, we don't do therapy, that experience can be so powerful that it does what we've witnessed, it like resets their emotional circuit breakers. Because those circuit breakers are pop because they're in overload from trauma or war or sexual assault and and it's a natural thing for that circuit breaker pop, just like you would in your house if you get hit by lightning. Something has to come off the line. Right. Unfortunately, this is what the, you know, the public doesn't quite understand about a veteran. Uh, 
But when that happens and the veteran becomes disconnected from themselves, from their family, then it's labeled as post-traumatic stress and all the symptoms that go with it. But what we have been able to perfect here is when we do this procedure for the veteran, they get to reset their own circuit breaker and then that brings them back emotionally. And then when they go back to the therapist and they're able to talk about the things that happened to them, then the therapist is able to get to a place where they need to or they go on and back to school, get a job, and it's all fun. But you got to reset the circuit breaker, and that's the key to our success. That's the key piece, and if I understand correctly, when they meet with this horse and they have this experience, or it starts with a connection, really, the horse connecting with this right. veteran, uh, and he or she connecting with the horse, that something unlocks within that veteran? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that how you would say yeah, that? That's, that's what we call that circuit breaker, the, the emotional release thing get allows and whatever it, whatever it could be scientifically is it neurological is it chemical what's being released back into the brain that creates that oh my god moment that their feelings start to return and then all the veterans say to us and we hear it over and over again say i can't explain what's happened to me but something's changed mm -hmm. and that's that's Almost like a spiritual moment in a sense. Well, for, for some of them, they actually say that it's been the most spiritual experience they've ever had. And, and what's happening is they're feeling this unconditional acceptance, finally. And the horse provides that because the horse is actually engaging the veteran, saying in horse language, will you protect me? I need to be with somebody else, you know, for my own safety, and I'm choosing you. Is it okay? And the veteran is not used to that being so isolated. So that horse, horses being herd animals, horses being very relational and also very sensitive, bond with that veteran, who then something clicks within the veteran, but he, he or she feels connected. Correct. And that something loves them. I, I'm, yeah. I'm going to put it that accepts way. Them. Accepts them. Accepts unconditionally them. accepts right. them. It's beautiful. Where and how did you come up with this concept of, of taking that retired thoroughbred? thoroughbred racehorse who needed a new life after the race course. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with this concept? Well, I actually learned about these techniques and they were developed for horse people so that they wouldn't abuse their horses unintentionally trying to train them. Because when the horse goes into flight mode, that's their survival mode, it's because they don't understand what's happening. So this is what we're talking about. When we teach the veteran the language, they can reassure that horse, you'll be safe if you're with me. So when I did this for myself the first time, just out of curiosity, it was a pretty powerful moment to see, wow, everything I thought up to this point was wrong about the horses. And uh, so I did that. And then I teamed up with Melody Squire, our lead instructor, and I said, can you help me put a program together because I think this could be very powerful for people that are what we call emotionally disconnected. And from day one, back in 2011 actually, when we started doing this, it worked every single time. So every single time you've had a success. Yeah. That's very key. And you touched on it. I want to make sure the audience understands that um, Therapy can be very beneficial, medication can be very beneficial, but it's not always the end all, oftentimes not the end all. And what your program is, is offering another modality of healing, mm -hmm. another avenue of healing. I like to think of this as an adjunct to what's out there, but the reality for these veterans, if what's out there has not worked, when they call us, they're usually at the end of the line. Absolutely. And, and that's where they recognize when we're talking veteran to veteran, we can get right to the point. Thanks. And they know that I know, so let's not talk about it. Let's just get the job done. Absolutely. It's a beautiful thing. So um, beautiful thing that you set up this program. Great concept. Great modality. Where are you receiving most of your veterans? I mean, I'm, I'm going to talk about it here on the show as we're doing. We hope people that hear this will reach out to you. Where do you receive? Well, because we are a national organization, we uh, veterans travel from all over the country to come here. Okay. We have another uh, beautiful facility uh, that was donated to us for our use down in South Carolina. We have a full team in place down there that's doing absolutely 
fabulous job of doing what we do here, and uh, we're open to any veteran at any time when they're, when they're ready to come. Where do you see this going? Do you expect you to expand uh, elsewhere as well? Uh, we want to expand maybe just a little bit more. We have a board of directors that's analyzing and you know making sure that we're financially sound and we can do what we'd like to do. We know there's a tremendous demand. Uh, we are looking at possible a little more expansion. I'd like to build the Saratoga connection here uh, into uh, something that's recognized nationally, and then have our satellite facilities support the more local veteran that some of them will not get on an airplane. And uh, so we take that into consideration. Oh, phobias that they have, they uh, keep them off the airplane? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't call it phobias. It's all part of, uh, when that disconnect takes place, and part of the post-traumatic stress, if you really talk to a veteran in depth, they say, well, I can't be in, in crowds. It's too much stimulation for me. And that's again, see, it goes back to that circuit breaker. When that pops, it takes with it a lot of the things that we normally would have to just mitigate the normal overload. Mm -hmm. But when you're already in overload, everything becomes exaggerated. And Very overwhelming. Overwhelming. When you're in a post-traumatic stress right. disorder, state, everything can be very, very overwhelming. So we don't want to see that just medicated. Mm -hmm. We want it eliminated. Absolutely. And, and that's the beauty of what we're accomplishing here. And of course you mentioned Saratoga because we have the Saratoga Race uh, Course here, which is very popular among many, many people. Mm -hmm. um, and is that a good avenue for you to, I want to say save, and I'm not sure if that's a great, great word, but to, to take horses who are in retirement and utilize mm -hmm. them here for yeah. this program? And what's happening there is, and we get a lot of financial support out of the third grade industry, so some of the biggest names in the in the business. Uh, but when a horse comes off the track, they need to be kind of lay them up for a while, let them calm down, and then they need a, another career. So part of what we're able to do is we only use off the track thoroughbreds. And, and they, we use the word retired, but they could be five years old and they live to 30. So let's get that horse into an environment where they can trust and realize, well, there's a lot more going on here. And they go on to be eventing horses, dressage horses. And we work with uh, horse rescues to that end. Because, Wonderful. you know, they're taking on the burden sometimes of feeding horses, caring for horses. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to see the horses move on to a new life, just like the veterans. So repurpose for them at, you know, being a race horse is a very intense career. And I think that, like you said, with the veterans, there's a transition, you know, from that career. The veterans, a transition out of war into, like, if you want to call this normal uh, life. I don't know how normal <laughs> life is, but, but you know what I mean. So, what is it, Bob, that anyone listening to this show can do to help support Saratoga War Horse Foundation? Well, two things I, I would say, and I appreciate you asking that question, because, of course, we could always use contributions, like any... Uh, nonprofit, but more importantly, look out there and see if you know somebody that's like you mentioned in the beginning that's displaying these symptoms, and just have them look at SaratogaWarhorse.com, and then they can see the videos. There's a documentary on there. We've got more documentaries coming from PBS, and they're really starting to focus on this. But I need the veterans to know this is a safe place. It's a confidential program. We're not going to talk about what happened to you. We're going to eliminate what happened to you. And then the public, it gives them an opportunity to say, how do I help those veterans? Because they're trying to help them, but they don't have to reach out. And that's where that, that thank you for your service comes in. I would say, if I could share this, when and if you say thank you for your service to a veteran, please understand the pain and the sacrifice that they actually made, and they're not looking for the gratitude. They're looking for the recognition that this is what happened to me. So it's almost like if somebody said, thank you for your service, they realize what you've been through. And, uh, and that goes a long way for a veteran to say, okay, 
Sure. You know, I, th I thank you for saying that because I, I think we we take for granted uh, what that sacrifice really is, whether it's choice or not choice. When you go into combat, it's it's leaving family, children, loved ones with not a certainty that you're going to return, and certainly not a certainty that you're going to return as you left, you know? So um, I, I think we, we don't realize that, and then there's no way anyone like myself could really comprehend how horrific it can be to, to be in combat. Right. And so I'm glad that you had said that, because we really do need to understand how much they've sacrificed. Right. And the families, because when that individual comes home and is dealing with what they call the invisible wounds, it affects the whole family. And uh, and that's one of the beauties here, where when the individual goes back to the family, the family recognizes immediately the change and they're very grateful too. This profound experience that the veterans have at Saratoga War Horse Foundation, how long are they in the ring uh, in general before mm -hmm. that something happens? Well, it's all orchestrated to go through a procedure. So by the end of that procedure, when that horse is asking, can I join your herd, will you protect me? That portion takes less than 15 minutes. But we prep them for that by teaching them how to make that happen. And if you can't make that happen, and what I'm saying is, no amount of grooming a horse or riding a horse is going to trigger that change. It's nice, but we're very focused and very specific about how we accomplish the change. And then we just step back and let it happen naturally. Mm -hmm. And after that happens, uh, that, that profound awakening, uh, if you will, what's the next course for that veteran through the program? Well, uh, once they graduate from the program, we are now looking at long-term follow-up through our South Carolina facility in Aiken because the neuroscientists out of Fort Gordon have sent us people and they say, how did you do that? And we want to know. Well, we're saying it's in the brain because, and again, my simple analogy of the circuit breaker makes perfect sense to the veterans. And the scientists are all trying to figure out what it is, but we're saying this is how it's done and you figure it out. Mm -hmm. and, and then when we hear from the veterans, uh, like the American Legion uh, did a, four-page story on us in their magazine, and they went and interviewed 20 graduates going back three years, and they said it was amazing how they still remember the moment and how powerful it was for them and how their lives have changed. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, we said, okay, you know, there's a lot more out there. Beautiful. I think that um, animals and nature and humans are all meant to commune in any way, and that we, unfortunately, in the industrial world as we are, kind of got away from that at some point. And so your program is profound, but in addition to that, being in this environment is, is a very healing environment, a overwhelmingly accepting environment, no judgment environment. So, um, so, so sending you veterans, um, how about financially? Can the community support this organization anyway financially to help you or is that not necessary? No, it's always necessary in order to accommodate more veterans. Uh, so again, you can look at our website, saratogawalworths.com. I would appreciate that. And uh, see if there's something that strikes you as you want to participate and feel free. So, Bob, when I was driving in today to the farm, do you call it a farm? Yeah. Foundation? Yeah. Um, there's a sign, part-time help is needed, so tell the audience what you need. Part-time help, okay. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, are exploring uh, volunteers, but we need volunteers that understand what's going on uh, with horses so they can come in and assist us with some of the things we may need. Uh, because it's a confidential program, we don't really need volunteers in the indoor arena when we're doing the procedure. But uh, if they have some experience and they have some time and want to explore an opportunity, uh, we can gain uh, some emotional satisfaction, that's for sure. Wonderful. How about some barn help? Can you use any barn help? Yeah. Everyone can use barn help, yeah. right? Yeah, we, we can okay. explore that. Uh, okay. But, but we have to make sure that, um, that they already know what they're, they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of requests of volunteers, but if we have to do it with them, 
And then, of course, it's right. not as effective. Right. You would not want me in the bar, and that's what you're saying. In a nice way, is what he's saying, everyone. I just want you to know that. But you'd be welcome. So, all right. So, I love what you're doing. Thank you so much for giving your heart and soul uh, for this project and uh, to all of your team. Yeah. You know, in Aiken, South Carolina, and up here in Saratoga, yeah. um, it is an amazing program. Yeah. And, and, and I so appreciate our team, too, from Melody Squire to Janelle Schmidt to Julie and Mary Catherine and, and uh, Tom down in South Carolina because an idea is good, but if you can't carry it out, it doesn't matter. So here we've got passionate people saying, whatever it takes, we want to do. That's great. Yeah. That is so good. Thank you so time. much, Bob. Thank you. Oh, you do. Thank you. If you would like more information about Saratoga War Horse, please go online to saratogawarhorse.com. And for all of you that are listening to this show, if you are displaying or feeling or know someone that is displaying or feeling any of the symptoms Bob spoke about or I spoke about, I highly encourage you to take a look at Saratoga War Horse Foundation. The services are completely free, completely confidential. And people are receiving healing just like that. After years of therapy, traditional therapy, years of medication, they're receiving, receiving an awakening. It may happen to you. Please do reach out to Bob. Thank you so very much. Until next time, be happy, be healthy, and live abundantly.